I want to go back to linking shields because I see so many ways that um, we could take that metaphor. There's the importance of sharing data, of, of creating this, this uh, linkage between uh, uh, public and private, between different industries to try to uh, uh, you know, build upon each other, stand upon each other's shoulders. There's, there's also uh, the partnership aspect of having having defenders with you to help you to provide additional shields. How do you, how do you explain that that metaphor? Bring it back to uh, what it means to cybersecurity. Well, and 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 you've hit on some very critical elements of that. I mean, uh, before I joined the private sector, I came up through law enforcement. The FBI had brought me in, and eventually it pulled me into their CTAC. Uh, it's a computer center that they they built in the early days of the cyber battles that we were advancing. But it was also part of the mission was to protect the critical infrastructures of America, which many of you may know already are principally owned by the private sector. So if you've got these critical national resources that are owned by the private sector, the inescapable need to figure out the collaboration formula was just inescapable and as was absolutely critical. And so figuring out how to lock shields in terms of sharing critical threat information to to building the, the, the levels of trust that that requires between the private sector and, and elements of the government and law enforcement became a critical element of it because without that trust, you don't see the sharing. And if you don't see the sharing, and if you see the sharing in it done in, in although well intended, but in me, through mechanisms and means that are just too slow, given the rate and pace at which the the, the adversary morphs, then you've you still got a problem. So that's why again the predictive advantage of of some of these new solutions actually casts in new light what's involved in effective collaboration and information sharing. If you if your math models will predict before you even have to share information, it used to be you'd want to share, and this is why you had to update your DAT files every day or every week because you had to constantly be sharing and figuring out how to effectively share all that information to make sure you're positioned as, as appropriate as possible. Suddenly, suddenly that challenge isn't what it used to be. It kind of goes away, not completely. You, you'll encounter other forms of, you know, of collaboration challenges still out there, but at least that one that consumed no small uh, part of our time, energy, and effort goes away, and you now have to turn to other dimensions of of uh, the, the the collaboration. It's interesting that the the um, the challenge of trust. Even though we now introduce, you know, uh, silicon systems talking to silicon systems, the carbon units, we, between us, we, we, that's where the challenge used to be, is how do these carbon units figure out how to talk to each other in an efficient, effective, and quick manner? And then we said, well, wait a minute, now the pace, rate and pace at which the adversary is striking, we've got to have our silicon systems figuring out how to talk. Then the question, well, that doesn't do away with the trust issue. It just sort of pushed it down to another level. How do we extend to these extensions of ourselves, our, these partners, our silicon partners, how do we push that element of the trust formulation uh, to that level and do it in a way that is continuous. Um, see, that's one of the reasons that of late, even though I, I, I took some heart and, and excitement in this 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 new paradigm we've seen talk about uh, called zero trust, I, I think that title is a little unfortunate. And if I had been allowed to sort of frame the, the, the title, I would have preferred something like yes. continuous trust. That is uh, saying that with the strength and power of our new uh, AI partners, we have the ability to not only establish the, the trust that should be extended to an individual at a particular second in time in space, but actually go with them in a frictionless way in a manner that would continuously establish that that validated trust is should continue and goes with them no matter where they go, no matter where they're doing anywhere, anytime, any place. You know that, that it enables that, and that's that's just an exciting aspect of this this new world in which we're, well, we're now battling. Well, I think there's a there's a very apt phrase uh, from the last Cold War. I think we're in a new Cold War, personally, um, and uh, uh, we know it from from one of our leaders in the U.S. But it, I believe it's actually based on a Russian proverb, and it says, "Trust but verify." One of my neighbors here wrote a book called The Speed of Trust, and that one of the inherent benefits of trust is that it, it frees you up from the time, energy, and efforts you then have to spend on that verification. Truly helped validated trust liberates you in that way, and the cost, energy, and effort associated with that verification process is something you can now claim as an advantage. But the the, the trick to this, though, is... is um, uh, 
if the the verification process can be enhanced to the point that it is almost simultaneously with the first pronouncement of trust and then carries with it continuously without the friction that classically those verification processes imposed on the business process that is why you know the partners i've dealt with in the in the private sector in the business world quite often have seen me coming and go oh here comes the guns gates guards and the geeks because i had cyber too here comes the guns gates guards and geeks they're going to impose standards practices upon us that are going to be painful they're going to slow us down we need to move with speed and they they lamented what they they were having to accept with greater frequency the legitimacy of our claims to their time and energy and effort but they they resented it uh somewhat but began to accept it as they saw well what they're asking us to do in many cases now is that that's going to keep us in the game it's not a distasteful cost of doing business it's really a very uh, important validator uh, enabler of get, getting us into the game. We can't even bid in some of these customers unless we can show that we have certain protective measures in place. And if we don't partner with our security team to help make sure that that is in place, we don't even get to to, to pick a bid for the uh, the revenue that's in the offing there. These, these technologies and and uh, they remove some of the risk from trust, and that that is the the downside of trust is it does involve risk. If you can lower that risk, and if you can find a partner. That um, that you have trusted for decades, that you expect to be around and trustworthy for future decades. Um, having that track record is also important. Risk doesn't come packaged and fixed in its form. It, it's always morphing, and and our, nor is our tolerance for risk a, a static thing. So as we, as we mature as organizations, and as, as depending on what silo or sector of the, the business world we may sit in, we find our tolerance for risk fluctuating. Uh, in one sector, we may say, no, this is so critical. Our, our risk tolerance is just not what it would be if we were in a less critical area. The complexity of uh, the world and the relationships we have might be such that that it, it allows us greater greater flexibility or whatever. So I think being attuned to the way in which these uh, these other variables can flux and, and, and change is important. And again, I keep I'm, I feel like I may be harping on the strength and the the, the resilience that a AI supported solution gives you is uh, it is another one of those variables that says, well, look, let your risk tolerance fluctuate as it will. The strength and prowess that you get from a basic investment in an AI supported math model is strong enough to go with you if you have a low risk tolerance or if you have a high risk tolerance, it, the same solution, it doesn't discriminate. They'll give you the same prowess and strength as your, your risk tolerance may fluctuate on you. And that's that's a, a relief because otherwise it does require us as CISOs to constantly be adjusting and, and modifying whether, you know, because we know we don't have the money to, to protect, you know, against every possibilities. We try and say, well, we'll look at the probabilities. And some of us, if we were in a really dire strait, we'll say, look, I, I don't have the resources and the money to do battle with anything other than what I can say is an actual Actuality. You know, I can only deal with actualities, maybe hope to aspire to one day dealing with the probabilities and almost never really with every single possibility well, out uh, there. John, every conversation with you is a mind expanding experience for me. I thank you for all of the ideas that you've just put into my head. And I thank you. You're welcome.